Um, call the meeting to order at 6.32. Um, do we have any additions to the agenda? Yes, sir. Yes, Chair. Yeah? I just wanted to mention one little topic about uh, a fire truck. Which okay. Just one question. Fire truck. Can I fire it away? Uh, you could maybe do it under public comment. Okay. Um, but we'll have to review our minutes first. Yep. Okay. Um, review of minutes from October 21st. Oh, we've got. Okay. So Deb yes. just called me. Had What's that? A change. Deb what? had a change to the minutes. Okay. She just called me. It's for the reappraisal piece. She wanted to change out the word possibility um, versus she recommended someone to do the appraisal piece and take out the area where it said it costs more or there was questionable, su questionable support with one of the systems. So. Okay. So can you take us line by line? With yeah, that? are you saying under her recommendation, recommended? Deb yeah, Fillion recommended? She recommended, she didn't uh, like the wording. She said that she said it was a possibility to use that person and um, we'll follow the you know, the RFP process and go that route. So does she mean replace the word recommended with the word said? We're or, recommended or? with pos the possibility to use that person. So how, how would it read then? Yeah, that doesn't sound... So we start the sentence, it said he could do site visits? Is that the sentence you're talking about? I thought it was Deb Philly and recommended. Yeah. Oh, you're about. doing that. Okay. Yeah. And I, I was saying the recommendation, but okay, you're right. Probably the first one. Yeah. So. Recommended. So Deb Fillion probably um, said that we were trying to do. Said that we could hire our own ex assessor as a possibility. Okay, so take out recommend. Yeah, just. If you change recommend to said, then it's just saying this is an option. Mm hmm That makes more sense. Yeah, that's good? Because she, she's not recommended. Right. Right, she didn't. And then um, where she mentioned something would cost more, like a different system, and there's questionable support, she wanted that taken out because it was negative. Where Sounded is that? Like, uh, I have to find that. Um, Okay, I'm um, so Deb Fillion. Just, just above that. Yeah, that costs more with questionable support. She wanted that taken out. Oh, right. So oh, it would read, we, uh, pros sure. and cons of using Nimric software we now use. It has great support versus Catalyst and or other systems, period. Right. Okay. And that's it. This cross off of us, I think. Evidently. Evidently. Okay. And then you were saying something Yeah, so while we're dealing with that, um, in the same line we were just on, Deb Fillion recommended, and now Deb Fillion said, yeah. uh, let's call it our own assessor slash appraiser, A S S E S S O R. <laughs> and then when you're ready, Jen? Yeah. Just going to the top, review of the uh, first page, review of the October 7th minutes. Carl Ettenayer suggested removing a comma. Yeah, not. <laughs> That's a name. I am not a doctor and I don't play one on television. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then the motion was to accept the minutes as amended. I just got it. <laughs> so then, then the motion there uh, was to accept the minutes as amended. Okay. As amended, yeah. yeah. And, and then um, on page three, at the end of that discussion with the homeowners who are pursuing the FEMA buyout, um, it says that the East Montpelier select, select Board is receptive and wants to help. Uh, I would take away the word help and uh, just say wants to support the buyout process. That's good. Is that that's more specific? Yes. That's the last bullet on that? Yeah, exactly. Okay. 
and then, and that was it. Is supportive of the buyout process? And wants to support the buyout oh. process, was my suggestion. <coughs> Why don't we just say he's supportive of the buyout process? He's receptive and supportive of the buyout oh, process. Oh, receptive and, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Good enough. I think we should pay the No, I don't think so. <laughs> yes? I'll make a motion to, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. We have a second. Sure. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Ms. Cast. Now, under public comment, we have someone here that would like to say something. More than one person, or two, or three, or what do we got? Just myself. Okay. Uh, I'm seeing. Well, I see other people here. Oh. No, I'm on the auditor. Do the auditor. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Public comment. So. Um, I'm on the board of the East Montpelier Fire Department. And as you all know, we bought a new fire, fire truck. We've had this engine for, for many years that we uh, would like to get rid of somehow. It's been on, in the works to try to sell it for probably six months or longer. It's a 1995 International engine with a poly tank on the, in the back. Of course, an engine with, watch, uh, with a pump. And we are offering it to the town of East Montpelier at no charge to give it to the town. If this town doesn't want it, we want to offer it to the town of Callis. If the town of Callis doesn't want it, there's word that maybe uh, the town of Worcester, talking to Mike Utton, uh, they might want it for the poly, poly tank that's in the back. Uh, they might offer us something for it. And we're thinking that we'd like to get about 5000 for it from the town of Worcester if East Montpelier doesn't want it for free or Callis doesn't want it for free. We're first offering it to the town of East Montpelier and we want your thoughts on it. If you want to get back to me or get back to the chief within the next few days, <coughs> we'll to Guthrie about it, that's fine with why, me. Why do we want Thank you. Why would you to want it? To, uh, to blow out Paulwitz, which we always used to do. This is another piece of machinery, we have no place to park. We eventually will. So you have it parked up in the fire station. Yeah. 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 Take it up. We yeah. want it off our books for <laughs> insurance reasons, registering. Yeah. yeah. And we aren't using it. We've dumped all the water out of it. We've stripped it. We've taken everything off of it that we want it for fire service. So it's whatever you guys say. What do you got? Would we, if we had, if the garage vote goes, is positive, would we even have room? Probably not. I wouldn't do that. We would just park, yeah, theoretically park it outside. outside and rust away. You'd have to drain the water out of it, park it outside. Yeah, but then it sits what, and rust is this, away. A, is, this, is this a Guthrie question? Yes. I, I'm asking, well, I, I don't know nothing about it. I'm that. still resistant to buying it or, keep, or getting it. I don't like having lots of machinery around that sits around yeah. and it's 30 years old. It's just going to rust and not going to be very usable in a year or two. And insurance. Exhaust and rusts off and maintenance and insurance. But do we need another rig to blow out coals? I thought we had a pump or we use. No. I talked to Guthrie this morning about that, in fact. Yeah. And uh, he was explaining to me that we've got a trade off with the city of Montpelier. They have a three quarter million dollar vacuum truck. And uh, we lend them our roadside mower because they've got like three days worth of roadside mowing to do yeah. over the course of the year. So they don't want to buy one. So we lend them our roadside mower so good. they can do that. And then yeah. they come up and clear out culverts. Oh, they will. Okay. Yeah. I it sounds like a good idea to me. That's why I thought it was a good yeah. question. Yeah. Even, oh. even though our chief took engine four and blew out two culverts for Fairmont Farms back here, a week ago. Oh, really? So, so okay. they put their, their lines through, their four inch lines through, right. to pump manure out to the fields. Okay. But that's a point of interest. Okay. So. That's, yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, it's, you know, we want to know what to do with this truck. We want to get rid of it. Where is it going? We don't know. We like that. Wow. You, you can reach out to Guthrie if you'd like, but I, I can tell you, I'm resistant to the idea of getting another piece of crap together. So, we don't have a place to We had. An engine we gave to the town, and they used it for about eight years before they got rid of it. Yeah, well, so 
Yeah. If you want to ask Guthrie, then tell Guthrie to call us if he really wants it. But I don't really want it. You guys don't want to talk it over with Guthrie and, I can. and get I can. there, get, uh, get uh, consensus board. about because you know we we have to deal directly yeah, with you guys yeah, yeah. first to give it to you. Yeah, I think. I'll, I'll, I'll text Gus. Exactly. I'll talk to him about it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, right. get, get back to you. Get, get back to you within. If, yep. you, if you don't hear from me in a day or two, call me. Okay. Or text me or do something. Thanks, Seth. Thank okay. you. All right. That's Thanks, it. Eddie. Thanks, Eddie. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. So, external audit discussion with Sullivan Powers and Company. Chad Hewitt, CPA. I assume that's you. Okay. Generally, we had no other public comment. Well, I asked around if they're public. Well, these guys are public. Okay. What's that? He said he wasn't public. Yep. Yeah, you're, you're here for a reason. Yeah. 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 He's part of the Brazilian Roche Committee. Yeah, and Ash Tree. Right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. How you doing? Oh, good. Welcome, Jed. Yeah. Back after another year. Um, I, I think you guys have all got a copy yes. of the audit report that uh, they got that distributed last week. And uh, what I was going to do is just kind of hit some major highlights of the year. Uh, as a very other than the, uh, the flood that everybody had last year, it was very very favorable for you. So, um, first of all, I mean, you, you have a 54-page audit report. The one thing I guess I want to uh, mentioned that really the only thing in here that's that's mine are pages uh, what one one two three this is our this is our opinion where where we state that the uh, the, the town of East Montpelier is getting an unqualified opinion which is the, the best you the best you can get uh, you've, you've consistently got unqualified opinions for the last since as long as I've been doing doing East Montpelier so there so that's that, that, that's a good thing again it doesn't get any better than that so the next, the next uh, part, uh, pages of, of the audit report that uh, I just want to kind of focus on are pages five through five through nine. And, and what this is, this is what's called the management discussion and analysis. But th this is what basically my favorite part of the audit because what it is is it it, uh, it tells how the town did financially in layman's terms. In four or five pages, you can kind of read this narrative, hit, hit the highlights, see what the fund balances were, see what the pros and cons were. Uh, again, read this in four or five pages and it just kind of tells the story. It's, I, want, I also want to call it a glorified slut words report. It's like for, for finances only. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so this, this, is a, this is a great, great, great document. And, and again, that way you're, you're not having to read the other 54 pages that I'm required, or, or, or 45 pages that I'm required to, to, uh, to put together. So. Um, Turning the turning the page um, turning the page twelve. These are the kind of the highlights that we like to kind of go by. Is that our main, our main focus of, of the uh, the town are, are, are based on th on three three areas uh, three funds: essentially. the general fund, the capital reserve fund, and what's formerly known as the ARPA fund, which uh, that 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 the money has been. Um, uh, all, all unobligated right now, but we we can go into that. But <clears throat> the general fund, looking at looking at uh, again page twelve, um, the general fund ended the year having just about a six hundred thousand dollar fund balance, uh, yeah. which, which is which is great. And something I can share with you. And of, of that of that six hundred thousand dollar fund balance, um, one hundred thirty six thousand dollars of it is is a. Uh, uh, the term is called assigned, where you guys have tentative plans with that, and and what that what those plans are, uh, when you guys set your FY25 um, tax rate, you, you gave back a hundred thousand dollars to the voters to reduce taxes. So essentially, you're saying, okay, I got this fund balance, I'm going to give back a hundred grand. Um, there's another thirty grand uh, of assigned fund balances, which is what you kind of earmarked for. Uh, Compensated absences or vacation pay, like when somebody leaves. Um, I know a lot of that was kind of used to, used up when Bruce left a long time ago, but that, that's a it's an earmark that you guys have had. And then then the, the last category is you have what's called unassigned fund balance. That is basically that's what's left over, and it's it's a big number. There's 447, but of that um, there's 300 there's 300 thousand dollars of this is what what the board has set aside as your emergency basically your rainy day fund. Uh, uh, I think that was uh, actually you two weren't here, so that was their emergency reserve fund was set up. I want to say six, seven years ago, I believe, um, yeah. when it was set up. 
but again, it's 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 merged with the with the general fund. But again, you guys have no tentative plans with that. that that's why it's kind of assigned. Uh, that's why it's unassigned. I mean, that's that's the um, that's the terminology we use. Uh, the next column over, capital reserve fund. I mean, uh, self, self self explanatory. There's one 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 million six hundred seventy eight thousand uh, dollars that you guys have out there for available future capital projects. I, I know the town. That's very well at uh, having a capital plan. I know you guys have a, a plan go, go going out quite a ways where, where you'll spend that money. So, and then the next next column is, well, is the upper fund, and that uh, shows one hundred and seventy thousand dollars in the upper fund. But this this money has all of the restrictions of the ARPA. I mean, some towns don't even like to refer to it as ARPA anymore. But what this is, this is formerly known as ARPA money that has been, the restrictions have been released because uh, we, we told the feds it's been utilized to, to subsidize salaries, but basically it's $170,000, it's, it's free and clear money that, uh, that the slut work can determine to do what, whatever you want with it. Um, so, um, uh, turning the page, turning the page uh, is, so the, the first part was basically your, your balance sheet, your assets and liabilities, with the net difference being your fund balances. Uh, the ne next page is, is essentially the profit loss, and you can actually see here that the general fund, uh, looking down towards the bottom, the general fund actually lost $87,000 during the year. Well, a large portion of this loss is really just related to the, the flood. Uh, you you spent a lot of money on, on flood expenses. The money, uh, FEMA hasn't come through yet, so, so our expenditures out far exceeded our expenditures in related to, uh, to, to the FEMA project. Had that not happened, um, you guys actually would have been in really good shape. If, if you actually turn two pages um, in the audit report, if you turn to pages 40, uh, sorry, 40, 40, 41 through 46, this is, this is kind of important. It's kind of similar to you seen because uh, Michelle and Jen give you uh, budgetary status reports all year long. That's what this report is. This, this is your budget actual report for the town for the fiscal year ending. And uh, just just looking at um, again, but call call for the budget, call for the actual, and then the, the difference is either favorable or unfavorable. And looking at page forty six, the town actually voted to lose one hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's what you guys actually told told the voters. We were, we were actually we wanted to give back one hundred fifty thousand dollars to the voters. We said we're going to spend one hundred fifty more than we're going to bring in. In reality, you actually made $12,300 $12, more. So, so it, it was a positive, as a $162,000 positive swing. I mean, you wanted to lose 150, you made 12. The question is, how, how did we do that? Well, several, several big things. Um, $40,000 of, of unbudgeted interest, interest earnings. We all know <coughs> that, that you, you're, you had a very high uh, supply of cash during the year, interest rates were up at the bank. That was, that was forty thousand dollars of unbudgeted money there. Um, the, um, the 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 biggest the biggest attribute is, was really in, in, the, in the highway operations. That that came in hundred and twenty thousand dollars under budget. Whether or not I mean, it's a combination of of salt being under, sand being under, um, chloride being under. So I mean, whether or not it's it's Guthrie being frugal, didn't need it. Obviously, it was an easy winter uh, last year. So so a lot of po a lot of positives that came out of that. Um, you also did, um, unfortunately, because because of FEMA, because of, because of mud season, um, the trucks were rolling a lot more. So you did spend more on diesel fuel, but obviously when the trucks are rolling, they break down more. So you overspent your uh, your, your vehicle repairs and maintenance budget by like 33 grand. And I think if I, if I talk with talk about Guthrie, I think a lot of that was actually bought a lot of new tires mm -hmm. all, all, all at once. Tires and chains, she did a, a bolt buy. But but again, as the trucks are rolling, they're, they're breaking more, just being being used more. So, But overall, like I said, from a budgetary standpoint, you wanted to lose 150, you made 12, positive 160 grand. But then, then the fl the flood the, the 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 flood is what what the uh, kick kick you when you're down. So I mean, this year we actually had flood flood uh, expenses of 160 grand. Only 50 FEMA had only come through with 57 thousand at that point. So that's that's why that's why in total we actually lost 
$80,000 because, uh, really because of the FEMA, FEMA projects that, that didn't come through. So, so those are the, the, the main highlights for the year. Um, uh, there's a couple other things. Uh, could, could I? Sure, yeah, absolutely. While well, you're talking about yep. the FEMA, it just struck me, um, how do you do accrual-based accounting when part of the posts are FEMA funds which you know, need to be approved and are somewhat mm -hmm. uncertain? So, so, so as far as so, so the expenditures are easy. The expenditures, as soon as you incur an expenditure, right. that, that that's that, that's an expense. The revenue it becomes revenue is when they when FEMA obligates the funds, and this is the, the key. And you have you you get the money within sixty days after your rent. So so in, in this case in this case at the end of June thirtieth. FEMA, I think, owed you, was it, like, did we figure out 250000 Michelle? Was that, was that about right? But FEMA had only come through with $50,000 of money during that time. Mm -hmm. so, so there's a lot more money coming from FEMA. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but it just uh, had to, to, to be considered a revenue, the money has to be in, in the in-house in within 60 days after year end. So, okay. so, okay. yeah, so, so conversely, what's going to happen next year? More income. In this this current year, you're going to have a lot more income yeah. with with a lot less expenses, provided yeah. FEMA comes through. Right. I mean, I got some. We don't have another storm. Right. I, exactly. Guess, exactly. I, exactly. I mean, I got some down in this poor, poor town of Washington. They, they, I think you guys got more FEMA money than they, but they, I mean, they, they haven't gotten hardly anything. It's just it's a slow, slow, slow process. Yeah. So. So, so those, so those uh, are the big highlights of the, of the audit. I mean, again, the, uh, obviously the town has many other smaller funds. We, 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 we definitely spend time with them, but the main focus is on, on what we call our major funds, like I said, general fund, capital reserve, and the, and the, and the ARPA funds. That, that's, that's the focus of the audit. So, other things related to the audit, um, uh, we, where there, um, we did not have any what's called uh, material weaknesses or reportable findings in the audit. So, so we did have a few small recommendations for Michelle, Michelle and Jennifer that, that they're going to they're going to take a look at. There's just just small stuff, but nothing nothing that's actually uh, required uh, re reporting actually in the audit. So that's great. So, yeah. and like I said, unqualified opinion doesn't get anything get any better than that. So, any questions from you guys? Yeah. So on the. Fund balance, let's see. No, on our contingency fund. Contingency. You said that's 300,000, I remember it was two something, I thought. Oh, I, I, think, I think it's it included, it's, it's, that, uh, it's, it's definitely 300,000, but have you okay. been adding the interest that's been included? Okay. Yep, every, every year. So like, how come you can't earmark that as a contingency fund in your accounting? Uh, un unfortunately, the, the governmental accounting gods that make the rules oh. say, unless there's a plan for oh, okay. it, so, like for instance, the, the capital reserve, capital reserve yeah. plan. Yeah. Right. Contingency. It's just like it's just like a rainy day fund. It, it's, it's. It is a rainy day. It is a rainy day. Fund. Why you couldn't no, no, no. And, and again, I, I wish we could, and that's yeah. that's why I. It would be to, a lot more clear when you go with an unassigned. Right. That's actually no, sort of assigned, but. I, I completely I, I completely agree with you, Stephanie, right. because we've actually gone around. Or I would actually like to assign it. Say, it because because ass, assignment means you have a plan for it. Yeah. But the thing is, nobody has a plan yeah, for unexpected yeah. things. Right. So, so, it's, so it's just, but again, we, we it had- It just seems like it would be a lot clearer. I mean, again, we, we, we wish yeah. we could. We would okay. just, it's, it's, unfortunately, it's not our decision. Yeah, yeah. And so- Because uh, for someone looking down through there, they can say, hey, right. where's your contingency fund? Right, and again, it, it is- And I know we have Yep, yep, no, it, it, it is disclosed, like, again- it's somewhere else. else. Yep, it, okay. in, the, in the audit on, right. on page, on page, 32, right at the bottom, it says the general fund unassigned fund balance includes 300,978 of emergency reserves okay. as approved by the voters. Yeah, I see that. So, so that's been building up with interest. Yep, exactly. I yeah, mean, because I'm, there was two sub, 265. I mean, if you figure Michelle's been getting close to five, even if it's 5% on $200,000 a year, that, yeah. that, 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 adds, that adds, adds up that's pretty good. Okay. Yeah, so, and again, again. We're investing more than that. What's that? We're investing more than that. Oh yeah, she, she's, she's investing a lot. So. Uh, I know. Yeah, yeah, but we're just talking about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, because yeah, I mean, she because I know it wasn't three hundred thousand. We set it up, so that's probably wondering. So. Yeah, you yeah, know, I mean, she's right. investing a ton. It's just, and she just allocates the interest. Yeah, yeah. Based on based it on builds on, up. Okay. On, on who, who's, who's money that's being invested. Right. So. Okay. So. 
Any questions? Any what, what is the what is your fees for the audit? Eighteen. I, I don't know. Eighteen. Uh, Eighteen. Is that it is? That's okay. okay. And we do a full audit every year? Yes. We have it. Okay, okay, you asked about that, and you want to address that? Because he had asked yeah, about we, the Yeah, we do it other, on other boards, and we do a, not a full scale every year or every other year. You want yeah, to? Yeah, no, there's, so there's, three le there's three levels of service. There's an audit, mm -hmm. and there's no such thing as a partial audit. It's just it's, you know, it's an audit. Okay. There, there's a smaller scaled down version called a review, but with a review, we give you no uh, assurance. So basically, in here, we're, we're telling you the, these financial statements are fairly stated. Mm -hmm. In a review, your report's gonna look identical to this. The letter from us is not, is not gonna say these numbers are fairly stated. So, mm -hmm. so because we, we, we do a lot less procedures. I won't even look at an invoice. I won't confirm a balance. It's, it's a review is pr primarily just inquiries. So there's no there's no testing there's no looking at the audit evidence stuff like that and but but again it's it's, it's is it cheaper absolutely do I have some towns some towns definitely do a, a, a cycle mm -hmm. uh, I probably have three or four towns that will do a cycle because you guys still have elected auditors right yes. yeah but they don't really do audit okay but but again town <laughs> the towns that don't have elected auditors they don't have a choice yeah they they have to but yeah. I mean I, I do I do have probably a handful of towns that will go. Go review, audit, review, audit, or, or, or a cycle. So, what does that typically cost in, in relation to the full? Uh, I would say, I'd say a review is probably like sixty percent of an audit cost. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. And again, it, it, all, at the end of the day, this 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 right here is, is identical, except mm -hmm. ex except that the the letter from us mm -hmm. is it just the terminology changes because we just do a lot less of procedures. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. And the other thing, is, well, I guess you guys aren't going to the bomb bank, um, but it, well, maybe you're not doing. Yeah, we might. But, but, the is, but the thing is, if, if you're actually going to borrow money, they're going to want an audit. Yeah. Well, we oh, really? Yes, yes. We, and when we went for grants as well. They want your audited financials. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's it does have a yeah. Uh, use. Yeah. 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 For five years. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> I'm just being fiscal. No, no, no. I, 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 yeah. I'm, not, I'm not advocating. No, it's I, 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 it doesn't seem like a smart corner. I'm, I'm not disagreeing. Right. I think okay. it's, we need to ask well, the questions. I agree. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, okay. Carl. Okay. Seth doesn't agree with you. <laughs> but, no, I agree with but you. Thank you fine, but thank you, Phil. Select board for backing me up. Are you backing him up? Can I ask some questions? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. You got any more questions? <laughs> I don't. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> any questions? Are they on your side? Uh, yeah. uh, no. Okay. I think we're good. Okay. Yeah. Jennifer? Ben? No. So there's really, I mean, reading through your, there's really nothing other than, you know, FDIC insurance and. Some, some policy? No, no. As, as, far, as, far, as far as internal controls and stuff like that, we, we don't, as far as uh, recommendations, and again, that's, that's another thing, that's another thing with a review. I don't, we, we don't, we don't look at internal controls, we don't test any controls. Excellent. And, uh, but, uh, but no, I mean, the, 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 the policies and stuff, the internal controls here are, are, are really good, they're adequately working, we, we test them. And again, we, we had a few small comments about, as far as recommendations, like I said, there's, uh, there, there, was, there was some certificates, of, like the FDIC coverage you're talking about, they, right. they, got some, they got some CDs at 250. Well, of course. You, you only cover it to 250. That's why it's like. Interesting. I, I think you're doing CDs at 240 now. Or well, no, I'm actually going to do five buckets of 200 instead. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll be safe. Because yeah. he, I don't know why he was mixing and moving stuff around to like throw us off. But yeah. it's fixed now. It's all fixed. And the government, and the government recovered anyway in a crisis. Well, we, but we, that's we, another we, we hope so. But I, I can't say any well. So. I understand. Yeah. But we have. Fabulous treasurer, fabulous town administrator. I wouldn't, expect, I wouldn't expect this report to be any different. There you go. There you go. So, so with the fraud risk assessment, uh, the town has not performed. That you, you point out. Um, how, how much of a job is that to perform? Well, actually, actually, it's, I actually had a good long conversation with Jen, Jen and Michelle about that. It's really just documenting. It, it's a, it's an internal document. If you okay. do it, you're doing it. You're doing it for yourself. Okay. But it's it's really to sit down and hash out. Where can the town be beaten mm -hmm. by their by their, by employees, employees okay. by yeah. by anyone? So the employees would sit down and figure out where the town could be beaten. So, so like, like for like for no, like, I'll, I'll just give an example. I mean, I mean so uh, diesel fuel. Diesel fuel is a hot item. As, as you know, you can dump in your your home. You can dump in your your home fuel tank. I mean, we've actually had 
uh, two towns now that have caught police stealing these fuel. Mm-hmm. And they, they, because they had a suspicion, they had they put up gang cameras and caught them. If, if diesel fuel is going to be stolen, am I going to catch it? No. Are they going to catch it? No. It's going to be. Mm-hmm. And so, so, but it, again, it's just documenting. It's like, okay, diesel fuel. How can we? What can we do to to? This this is a fraud risk. What can we do to stop it? And and just and again, yeah, just documenting it. And, and and a lot of times, just discussing fraud issues mm-hmm. is the deterrent. Mm-hmm. And and so, so, but the, the 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 fraud risk assessment is just it's just sitting down to find out where can it be, uh, where is the town susceptible, mm-hmm. and um, and, it, and just documenting it. Just, mm-hmm. So and whether or not it's uh, like like, like give an example, she's collecting. I suspect she's collecting cash right now for property taxes. That actually doesn't bother me because I know when they collect the cash for property taxes, that person's name is going to come off that list because they, they don't come off the list. And they're not abated. It's gonna they're gonna show up delinquent, and then obviously yes. <laughs> people people gonna be screaming. Cash like if you guys had a transfer station mm. and collect the cash there, the risk goes to the roof yeah. because sure. all right, one goes in the pocket, one goes into the key. So it's just just kind of documenting where where are the risks out there. So so and again, it's just it's an internal document that it's just and in getting back to what we were saying, there's three levels of severity: material weaknesses, reportable conditions. And other recommendations. What you guys are seeing there are other recommendations. The town had no material weaknesses, no no reportable conditions. So these are just these are just best case scenarios, and, and just so that's why that's why we they kind of like a lowest level recommendations. Okay. So. Good. Thank you. Uh, yep. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. You guys have any questions? I don't think to say just because I'm new here today. The, okay. the, the, the phone's always available. So. Uh, okay. Good. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. Okay, so the next thing to discuss on our agenda, Brazilian Roads Committee to discuss Ash Street Removal Project for Spring 2025. You guys staying back there? Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for making a little time for us. Um, Thank you for handling this. <laughs> Our continue, continuing effort to whittle away at the ash trees on our roadsides. So we have um, sort of this single page that mm-hmm. Jen. Mm-hmm. Yep, we only have a copy. Okay, and. Uh, First table is sort of just drawn from the ash tree management plan that we adopted a few years ago to kind of give you a bit of a reference as to where we're at. Um, you know, we at that time when the plan was adopted, the intent was to continue the removal of approximately 200 ash trees per year under contract as well as have the road crew do some supplemental work themselves, maybe about 60 trees. And expending what we thought at that time, $100 a tree uh, for $20,000. Um, the reality is, of course, the ash trees have been cost a little bit more to remove, and that's kind of in, in the summary sheets which you've sort of seen before but uh, the summary sheets have uh, the number of trees taken for each project we started with u32 in 2020 after we had done an inventory of all of the ash trees four inches and not six inches and larger um, the prior year so we started in u32 in 2020 and each year we've been removing trees. Um, and last year, as, as you're aware, we kind of really hit the accelerator, uh, got two feller buncher operations, um, and removed roughly twice as many trees um, this past spring as we have done in previous years. So, um, for this year, what we were proposing 
Um, we're guessing that we've probably done on the order of two thirds of the target trees at this point. Um, <coughs> With the caution that, of course, we did the inventory in 2019, and the trees have been getting bigger in the meantime. So the trees that were four or five inches back in 2019 are probably six inches or larger by now. Uh, maybe. Probably well, not quite. Oh, okay. Not close. <clears throat> Next year, they'll be over six inches. Yeah. Okay. And so we're sort of guessing maybe we've done two thirds of the trees. Um, and so based on this year and last year, probably on the order of $120 per tree, what we didn't inventory are the trees that are less than six inches in diameter. And so the first column for the two projects that we're suggesting, the trees are less than six inches. It's just a rough estimate, it's not a count, because we haven't gone out and marked the trees, which is what we do before we go out to contract. So uh, the six inch, less than six inch trees is just kind of a number I came up with based on prior data. Um, and then the uh, next two columns, the trees from six inches up to over two feet and uh, diameter. Um, those numbers are uh, just reflecting that for prior projects, we don't remove every tree. We've removed roughly 60% of the trees for the roads that we've worked on because there are some utility trees that we don't take down. There are trees that we don't consider to be a hazard to the road because they're maybe leaning outside the right of way, so we don't take those down to save some dollars. Um, even though they're in the right of way. Um, so we're basically looking at doing Horn of the Moon Road, figuring if we did Horn of the Moon Road, that might be around $25,000 for 208 trees. Um, and the second project for consideration would be Sanders Circle, Jacobs Road, Perkins Road, which might be cost a little bit less, I'm guessing maybe twenty thousand uh, dollars for a total of one hundred and sixty-seven trees, um, and uh, you know what we had done last year um, for the first for the first contract, um, we bid it in two different projects and uh, did end up combining them. We did like. We had Adamant area, which for which we had received a grant. Um, so that was one project. And then we had Brazier Road and I guess uh, a couple other roads as a separate um, separate bid that was um, Lyle Young Road um, and Brazier Road. Yeah, we're in the second road. road. <clears throat> Yeah, that was part of Adamant. <clears throat> the Adamant circle was Sodom Bomb, yeah, yeah. Road. Agate Road, and Center Road. And uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was the, the separate contract with the other Feller Butcher, <clears throat> um, LG Furno, um, from Woodbury. Mm -hmm. yes. um, so we suggest. Uh, maybe uh, advertising to do for each of the two projects still. Um, if the town doesn't want to spend more than twenty or twenty-five thousand um, dollars, based on the bids that we get back, we can decide whether we just want to do one project or do them both. If we have really favorable bids, um, what we are targeting with these roads is. Um, roads that have a high density of ash trees to make it more cost effective for a feller buncher operation uh, versus an arborist to do the work um, so we can save some money. The thought is that for lower density roads, those are probably more appropriate for either a contract for an arborist or 
the town road crew to do the work. Um, fees. So what was your estimate for the loan? Twenty-five thousand. Yeah, twenty-five thousand. Yeah. Um, Sanders Circle is how much? In Sanders Circle, Jacobs, Perkins have, Road, maybe twenty thousand. So I'm sorry. You have the well, no, one down. Yeah. Jake, Jake, Jacobs, Sanders Circle, Perkins, and Jacobs was twenty. 20, 20 is my guess. Um, I think one thing looking at these roads, um, there seem to be a, a larger number of small trees on yeah. these roads compared to ones we've done previously, so we might get more favorable bids on it and come in a little bit cheaper. Um, so that's that's what we'd suggest. You guys want to chime in on yeah, <coughs> When you set your priorities, um, how how much are you thinking, if at all, about the amount of traffic on the road? Um, that's for the ones that we've done previously. That's been kind of I mean, that's one of the reasons we started out U thirty two. That was sort of a pilot project, yeah. but Gallison Hill being a high traffic road. Yeah. I mean, we go yeah. over in a Wheeler Road, and Schoolhouse Road, County Road, road is certainly it's County it's Road, road <coughs> Center Road. Mm -hmm. um, so we've tried to do high traffic roads. When we started, we were trying to kind of focus on areas too that were within uh, close proximity of uh, ash, known ash tree infestations. When we started, we didn't know of any in town. So we were looking at Plainfield, Montpelier having ash tree infestations previously. So kind of did those geographic areas, um, but the traffic was sort of like <coughs> yeah. Yeah. I was asking because in the list of Roads, potential roads for next year. One of these things is not like the others. Right, right. Perkins Road gets it has a fair number of ashtrays on it, but it gets almost no traffic. Yeah, it's a dead yeah. end. Yeah, more of the moon is. <clears throat> That's more a logistical issue with if you're expecting that you may get fellow gruncher. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're on the, on iron tracks, <laughs> steel tracks. So it, the more you can have things together. Right. So we were looking at the aggregations that you have in like, one of the moon road. If you're right there, you may be able to walk that machine instead of having to put it on a trailer and move it. Uh -huh. You know, if you're an arborist, you just jump in your <coughs> truck and move down the road, but it mm -hmm. isn't quite as, <clears throat> you know, and they're gonna look at that and say, well, we may be able to do both these projects. Yeah. You know, in this price range, if we don't have to go to the other side of town to, to do something. It's a quarter mile from the bottom of Jacobs Road to yeah. the beginning of Perkins Road. Right. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so that's just trying to get, get as much done as possible. And because we've done most of the major roads that have significant ash numbers right. uh, already, uh, here it's just trying to make the logistics work better for... <clears throat> Unfortunately, in terms of the fellow bunch of we've um, pretty much done the paved roads that they wouldn't be able to work on. Plus, we wanted to go over to Town Hill and do some work there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do you have any grants coming in for the... Uh, no, I, we we're going to talk a little bit about grants on, <clears throat> on, the, uh, on, the, on the next thing. The state mentioned now the state has two grant programs um, but there's been sort of a trend towards and this is for service money um, to look at disadvantaged communities and urban areas more uh, with respect to the grant programs so um, East Montpelier does not qualify as a disadvantaged community and so we can't get any money um, even though they have a pretty good size pot this year for ash tree removal. Um, the second grant program uh, for which technically East Montpelier would qualify, and that would be um, the committee was discussing roadside planting because when we did the original resilient roads inventory or plan, um, which was 2019, I believe, or 2018. Our committee started in 2017, so I think the plan came along the following year. 
Uh, one of the things that we recognized was that there are roads that are devoid of trees that would be nice to have a hedgerow along them. Um, and we thought maybe we could pursue a project like that for the second grant program. But we communicated with the state on that. They said, uh, basically, don't waste your time filing a grant application because it's more for urban areas and less for East Montpelier. If we wanted to do something in East Montpelier Village, um, North Montpelier, um, might qualify there, but I don't know if they really need planting. So okay, <clears throat> so we may not get any grants to offset the forty-five thousand dollars you want to spend. No, yeah, we do have to say though that we've been very fortunate <coughs> in being able to get grants. Yeah, no pretty much year that. after year. Yeah, yeah. and <clears throat> we were lucky in that we started out early mm. and stuff like that. And a lot of these towns didn't even think about it here until a year or two ago. No. And so we're, you know, to be fair, uh, the grant programs do change to meet the needs of different parts of the state. They see what happens and what doesn't happen. And they see that we're getting things done. And they've tried hard to support us year after year with grants, so we feel we've been pretty fortunate that way. Yeah. And, you know, to be fair to the rest of the state, and, uh, they all have the same problem that we do, and they're going to have it if they haven't yet. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, we, we put in our two cents, and if, if the program ha happens to work right, and, and <clears throat> they're not totally flooded with people who are just getting started, uh, then we may get some more, but we we don't start out planning mm -hmm. to get it. You know, it's just right. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, did you want to move on to the roadside tree planting project? Um, I, guess, <coughs> I guess we just let, ask the select board to sort of give us the green light as to whether or not they want us to. Um, Which project? We're both. Go out, out to bids on either one or the other project or both. Oh, on the tree, uh, on the cutting. And then you can basically. Well, you can, try, you can try putting them out for bid for the pulp yeah. because well, it what's the downside? What's the downside? What's the downside? downside? The, yeah. downside the only downside is if we committed to both projects for 45000 but we're not committing right now. Exactly. We're just putting out for bid. Exactly. Right. So okay. there's no, there's no mm -hmm. downside. I mean, yeah. from our perspective, the only downside is we'd have twice as many trees to mark. Because we'll have to mark them. Hopefully, the hopefully before the snow flies. Hopefully, the oh, for before you put it out to bid. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you have to get yeah. an accurate yeah. count yeah, of the trees. Yeah, a, a true table. Right. You have an accurate count of the trees. Yeah, so really. And, and the bidders can go out yeah. and see. Yeah, yeah. See about here. Sure. Yeah. Well, I. Yeah. But that's it. Not a big deal. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'd say yeah, both because they're right next to each other, so that makes okay. more sense. That sounds good. Okay. Okay. So I guess on the, the second one, the, I mentioned the grant program for roadside planting. You know, of course, when we start the Resilient Roads Committee, we didn't know we were going to get in the ash tree removal business. That was like 2019 when that came along. Um, you know, the table um, for the ash tree removal included um, some money for tree planting. Um, we recommended thousand dollar appropriation each year to do some tree planting. Um, so I just mentioned that we might want to do some tree plant, roadside tree planting, but just to give you a heads up, you know, maybe we can use some money for mulch or you know, well, what's that tree cost? or something if we, um, before we spent the money, I guess we'd come to you and say, That'd be good, think yeah. of this project. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about for or how many trees or yes yeah. we need to know something. Yeah. We need to know more specifics. Yeah, yeah. The we're, not, we're not against it, but we want to know what right. you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. The resilient roads plan was really an inventory of all of the roads. Yeah, and identified some of the roads where they could use tree planting. So that's 
So okay. we'll just go to go to take a look at that. And as I remember, those would be shade trees that would be protected from light. Yeah. Uh, Getting yeah, into that if they're subject. planted by the town. Yeah, I got they're it. in the right of way. I got it. Protected trees. Right, right. I got exactly. that. As opposed to trees that were not planted by the town and right. that are in the right of way but are on a landowner's land. Yeah. They can go out and cut those trees. Yeah, unless right. we designate them as shade trees. Exactly. Which we're be but we haven't done that yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so there's that. Yeah. Um, the third item, uh, we've been talking for some time and came to the select board and the select board said, great idea. Yeah. I'm an assistant Cree warden. Um, you now we beat the bushes and in fact, Mark Lane was willing to be. Is that the guy standing? Yeah, this he's this he's guy he's down he's here he's happens to be on our committee. Yeah. You know, we know. I mean, Paul loves doing this work, but uh, <coughs> step down at some point in time. We're not getting any younger here. Um, Mark is much younger than Paul and myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which one? Which one's better looking? <laughs> well, I'd uh, love we'll to vote on that. But, uh, <laughs> so you just go by looks? Sometimes. Well, just, just one. I, I know they're both pretty well, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, thank you. So, Mark and I have served for just a couple so, of days. So that would be our, our recommendation. Just, okay. Uh, yeah. So Mark's interested in taking that on. All right. Sounds good. Now, I don't think we're appointing those tonight. I don't think we're appointing an assistant tree warden tonight. We it's need just, to think about it. So, yeah, but we yeah, will be that. making appointments. We usually make them after town meeting. Uh, yeah. Or we can so, do one. So it's vacant. We don't have one now, right? No. 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 It's, so, it's no emergency. Is there a reason to wait? Not really, but. And there's, you know, March is a while away. Yeah. And we'd like to get this in place before, as you said, it's not. I guess we, he could serve out the rest of the non existent term. That we, yeah. That we, <laughs> Have no one filling the position. How long is the term? Till the next time and it comes up. Like an annual renewal, right? No, <laughs> no not some of the appointments are longer than some of them. Yeah. Yeah. We can make it for ten. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. To death. To death like lifetime of good behavior. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think Paul is reappointed every year. Right? <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So I yeah. I moved to uh, appoint Mark Lane as assistant tree board. Deputy Chief Warden. Deputy Chief Warden. Deputy. I can imagine. All right. It says assistant here. Deputy assistant. Deputy assistant. Are you going to second that? I will definitely accept. Is there any further discussion? All those opposed? All those. You're confusing us. Yeah. I can follow. All those in favor, please say aye. Go backwards. You have it. Unanimously. Is there any opposed? <laughs> well, there was five of us that voted, so I, I think we're know. good. I heard Zoe vote. Any, anybody opposed? Congratulations. All right. Welcome yes. aboard. It's unanimous. <laughs> okay. So then we had the shade tree preservation plan. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, which the select board had held a hearing on an earlier draft. Um, the We did a redraft, and I guess that was shared with you. Uh, one of the changes that we made was um, at Guthrie's uh, suggestion, which was a good one, was where we have a roadside that's actually a forested roadside as opposed to a hedgerow, if that forested roadside is in current use with a forest management plan, then those would not be designated shade trees for the trees within the right of way. We didn't think that was necessary. Um, so the converse being where we started uh, with trees larger than four inches diameter in a hedgerow um, and forested ones, forested area roadsides that aren't in current use. Um, those would automatically be designated as shade trees. And you know, again, this is all because of the changes in state law where previously basically everything was a shade tree and you're supposed to have a hearing for tree removal within the right of way. 
Now the right of way is only 25 feet, a little bit less from the center line. So that's where there's a three rod right away. Yeah. How about where there's a two rod right away? <clears throat> Do we, Do we have that? Else? I don't know. I know yeah, class I'm four roads, so they have a two rod. <coughs> there's three apparently. In the trails? Well, I know like Minister Road, there's three. Yeah, I'm not convinced that the town trails that we have that were class four roads are they three rod right away. Hmm. I don't know. I, all I can tell you is Minister Road, I can tell you by fact, is a three rod right away. Uh -huh. <coughs> that one I can tell you. Other than that, I can't tell you. All right. So I want to know where you guys were with this revised plan when we we're having all these forums about the town garage. So as I recall, this this was a very well attended here a forum before. Yeah. You have to have another one. It was. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we can't, can't throw this. We could have had a joint forward. forum on, on this yes. and the town garage. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I would note that um, since our hearing, Cal has actually adopted a shade tree preservation plan. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, I think they use. We're not going to necessarily follow Cal's. No, but they haven't been that successful. We did look at their plan. Okay. And we did. Yeah. Add some yeah. tweaks that look good from their plan. Nothing really <coughs> material changes, but I'll have um, by consultation. You know, property owner wants to consult with the tree, town tree warden. Um, I think we encourage that, add some language. In our draft, I think they're, um, they, they were capturing eight inch trees and larger instead of four inches and larger. That was one of the differences. Okay. So we'd have to have a hearing on this. Are we just supposed to have one? Um, I think you only have to have the one hearing, but it right. probably makes sense to have a second one. Because as you noted, there was quite a bit of interest in it. So. Yeah. Well, we'd have to warn it appropriately. Okay. Anything else? That's all I have. All right. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Okay. Yeah, Thank before you. we go, if, if we're going to have a, a hearing on this, you want to just quickly talk about timing? Well, it just seems like we've got holidays, et cetera, coming up. So yeah. it have to be for after the first of the year when we've got kind of a dead time. Sometime now until after we January. set the budget in yeah. January, so well, say February. So in January, it's really busy, but yeah. February is so long. Yeah. So probably in February. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you for your Thank you. For your Thank, you. Thank you for your work. Yeah. 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 So I guess the task that we have before you is to mark, mark those identify those trees, trees and get a count and then you're going to put it out for bid? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. And, and you you're we making a note to so schedule a hearing on the yeah, we'll seven we'll seven we'll February. Yep. Got that already. All right. Thank you. <laughs> yep. All right. So I just have a quick question about the trees. Are you, do you just, when you cut the trees in the town right away, do you just take the trees that are leaning in the road or do you leave some that <coughs> lean away from the road? Well, the ones that lean away from the road, we leave those yeah. there. Yeah. So a lot of those were inventory because they were in the right of way. Exactly. But when we get to the place where we're right. trying to figure out yeah. what is going to be the greatest right. hazard to the public. Yeah. The ones, that, the ones right. that are going to fall the other way. Right. Don't worry. You about know, and there's always some ones that are questionable and oh, stuff I know. like that. Yeah. Yeah. But <clears throat> yeah. All in all, that's how we. Yeah. That's why I thought. Tried to do it because we're right. trying to keep the cost yeah. down. I understand. As we can. Yeah. And we do take <clears throat> some non-ash right. trees too, if they're. Yeah. Non-ash trees. Yeah. Non -ash 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 sure. Yeah. 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 There. Yeah. Right. We sometimes get ones that are just in such terrible shape that. Yeah. You know. It doesn't do any good to take out some of the other ones when these are probably going to hit the ground first. Yeah. yeah. So we, right. you know, we use common sense, but that's good. <clears throat> okay. So okay. And, and what is the situation with the emerald ash borer now? <clears throat> here in well, the there's a lot more places. There's yeah. places where you can see whole hillsides that are dead. Okay. Uh, you know, they're heavy to ash. Uh, uh huh. Okay. You know, 
places over to New Hampshire way, but some places that I understand that are. Uh -huh. But not much in East Montpelier. Yeah, yeah how, mu how much do we have in town? Because I've got quite a few ash. I haven't seen any of them. <clears throat> well, first of all, you've got to know what to look for. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and it's sometimes hard to see. And it's not just because I don't see well. Uh, the other guys are looking all the time, too. And Guthrie's good at spotting it. But, well, we found it in, what, Farms four or five places? The Cape right? Farm. <clears throat> well, Cape Farm was there first. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was the first one. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, let's see, where else have we been? Uh, um, <laughs> come on, brain. Anyway. We, <clears throat> well, there's, there's at least there's some. five, four, five, six places that yeah. we found oh, uh, okay. over on uh, Burns Road, <coughs> I think Saw the Farm Listen, Road, uh, I've seen some. I got I yeah. to find out what you're looking for because I actually don't really know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've done the yellowing up in the tops of the trees. The yellowing of the, of the leaves? No. No. The spark. Itself. Oh, the bark? <clears throat> but will you see dead leaves on the tree? Uh, yeah, you'll get you will you'll get some dieback right right. in the branches that are from this size down. Yeah, up in the top of the tree. Oh, mm -hmm. really? Yeah. Sorry, and it, so it's hard to have dead limbs up there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, in fact, I had one on our place that I've been watching for two or three years and wondering what it was, and actually that top broke out of it this this summer. Uh, okay. <clears throat> and I, you know, yeah. immediately went. And <laughs> Took the bark off and looked, and sure enough, it was right there. Yeah. So that's the furthest northeast in town that, that I've seen. Well, I'll look a little closer. But <clears throat> and the woodpeckers start working the tree. Yeah. That, that's the bonding yeah. that Mark was talking about. <clears throat> they start stripping the bark. Oh, yeah. The trees. Dying. And All they right. do seem to go to the black ash yeah. first if they can. And then the white ash. <clears throat> then the white ash. Yeah. And, well, green ash too, but. Uh, All right. Well, thank you for the All right. thank you. info. Yeah. Anytime you got questions, just. Yeah, yeah. Call. I got to believe my ash. Okay, so. Um, call the deputy. The next thing to look at <laughs> municipal office maintenance interior paint project. Right. So there's two documents uh, RFT draft. Yeah. And then we got some preliminary quotes um, from forest vendors. And there's a copy of that too. So based on the preliminary preliminary quotes, it's over the 10k. So um, we would need your approval or possible motion to move forward with it. So our plan is um, we want to um, get all, everything painted. We're, we're doing a bunch of things to just get upgrades done. Okay. Like we've changed some doorknobs that now lock because we're doing some security stuff um, from some trainings we've had and whatnot. Um, we're changing, I think we're giving different, all passwords out to people. Yeah, we need to yeah. the rosy on that. Um, we had the counter and the kitchen cut because we're going to get a larger refrigerator since we don't have enough room for everybody now. Um, which it'll be covered under a grant because the energy committee is applying, they're applying for an energy grant so we think we can get that fridge cool. put in under that grant for the office um, what else did we do we uh, security we took, cameras yep security cameras we took um, the cupboard out of the bathroom because that was just sitting up on the wall it was weird so <coughs> we're just trying to fix things up um, this was a project that Gina kind of had started but it fell fell through so the interior paint is one of them and once we get all that done we're going to, we want to do the carpet as well and have that done because that is disgusting and it's been in here i don't know how many years 15 years what so we talked about taking the carpet right out yeah why do you want carpet yeah. sound sound barrier well there's somebody downstairs so they can't no but it. just us walking around you know what i'm saying i mean they, we did talk about it they talked about we talked with a bunch of them and delayers was saying that they think we should do a subfloor What's, so what's to carpet. Huh? To carpet. They wanted to do a subfloor. Under, under the carpet? Yes. Well, that's what there usually is something, under the Well, there is flooring. But when I asked the other two quotes, and they said, no, you don't need a subfloor because the subfloor is not attached to anything. It's not like it's fixing our floor. Okay. 
you know, and so that's another like three thousand dollars that we just really who don't you, need who to did do. Did you get quotes from? Delairs, Country Floors, and Flooring America. Okay. And that's Flooring for America was the cheapest. It, it, the sand is that bad if you. Well, we just don't want. I mean, it's it's a big, empty, tall ceiling space. Well, we don't have any here. We're talking about well, we we're, we're, we're walking okay. through all the time. Yeah, I don't know. We just thought we all kind of agreed. Like, we first thought carpet tiles, and then we're like, no, we should probably just do the roll carpet because it's cheaper. The tiles are more. Okay. So how about we invest in Crocs for all that office <laughs> staff? <laughs> slippers. That's all these slippers. <laughs> well, we we talked about the carpet years ago because that old tap clerk used to have allergies. Okay, so do you, are you thinking that we shouldn't do carpet at all? And just oh, I don't know. We'll just do a question. Type of flooring? <laughs> Is this from a, from a. I mean, I'm open to whatever from, you guys. So, was that carpet just right over this hardwood floor? No, we're not. <clears throat> not this floor. No, I, I get it. Oh, okay. But the carpet out there, is that just on this hardwood floor? This is hardwood. It's not the same as this floor. It's, oh, it's like not? an old. It's wood, but yeah. it's like um, old. It looks like an old farmhouse floor. Well, this is old too. It's not as nice as this, though. It's pine boards. Yeah, it's, it's, it's painted. It's a wide board. Probably yeah. a pine. It's, we'll they're not high. wide. They're thin boards, though. They're like, oh, really? yeah, oh, they're no, not very nice. Oh, no, this is hardwood. Yeah. It's like this. It's just from hardwood. From, from, from the old school houses, they always had hardwood. Right. But you, you have to live with it. I mean, this, right, is, this right. is your environment. Just from a sanitary perspective, I mean, there's no hotels in the world now that ever put carpeting in a hotel room. I know. And the same, what, you're going to shampoo the carpet every month? That's no. a good point. I know, these have never been carpets. Oh, just, just these like, carpets have been in here for 20 years yeah. that, or more. That's not my point. My point is, why would you ever Continue put that? Why would you ever put carpeting in? I mean, this is not a school. There's not going to be, they don't even have carpeting in schools. So what kind, of flooring, what kind of flooring would you think would be the best? You tell me, yeah, just from just... You well, no, the flooring that's there is fine. It's hardwood. This was, this was sanded down. See this floor right they here? Want to they want to put carpeting. They want to replace I know, the I carpet. get it, I get it. But you're saying put a new flooring, but we're not talking not about flooring. You can't, you can't like a, like replace a, the carpeting with, with some sort of flooring? Are you talking like a fake wood type of yeah, thing? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, we could. We could look at that. Well, why are you yeah. just sand down the floor that's there? It's hardwood. It's just like this. I think that would be a lot just more money. Just refinish it. Just refinish it. That's what you have. This and, and what's the cost going to be? Yeah, that would be a lot more. And it's more time and more mess. It's a nice product when you get done. Yeah, but I mean, if we got, with them coming in, with the carpenters, they can do it like they could start on a Thursday and get done by Monday. And we'd plan it on a weekend where we had a holiday. Right. So we, uh -huh. they wouldn't be in our way. Uh -huh. The painters are going to be in here working with us and around us. Hopefully they got painted first. I mean, aesthetically, this, this building, yeah. and you're going to replace this, whatever. I, I think you should put some kind of fake wood, something that aesthetically looks good, and fake you can, wood you can wash this, it. You can, fake wood in this? Mm. In this 1800 schoolhouse? You have, you have ugly carpeting now. You can, whatever you replace it with, it would be better than the carpeting that's there now. Aesthetically, it's aesthetically, it's in a historical building. They would not only really put fake flooring. They wouldn't put carpeting in an 18 year old. No, they would refinish the floor that's here. If you want to spend an extra 10, 15 grand, then it's not going to cost you 10 or 15 grand to stand up. I would like to have this floor refinished at some point. In yeah, the that's the same floor they have in there. I love refinish. I love wood. I love refinished floors. Good. I mean, I, I'm open to getting a table for Not for fake wood. No, for, for someone for to come in and refinish our floors. I would. That's, I that mean, I'm open to it. Okay. Let's see where it falls. Yeah. I'm open and, to and that. Why don't you see maybe they could, maybe we could do this floor too? Yeah. Fine. Let's, let's, let's get it. Let's get it. Okay. Sure. I'm good. I can it, get those. So in a historical building like this, the varnished wood, hardwood floor, the original floor, is a huge asset. Mm -hmm. It looks nice, and it fits with the character. Of the I agree. I just we're, didn't we're, think we're you guys would be going for yeah. that because let's it's really messy. And well, let's just see what the cost is that okay. versus the fake carpet. wood. That I mean, fake wood. That it, no. it could look. It could look okay. No. But get us close. No, right? no fake wood. No, you you would rather put carpet in? Hell yeah. Because at least you could take it up. Fake wood is just completely against this whole building. I think it would look a little weird to have fake wood in here. Oh like, my just, god. Just because it is an old. I know what you're saying. I get what you're saying, Scott. I just think it would look okay. weird, but that's just, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. So anyhow, wow. so we are looking at the painting, and so we got some quotes because we had to decide, we needed to know what it was even going to come in at. I had no idea. That's I right. thought the painting would come in under 10 grand for this whole <coughs> interior uh -huh. paint. It's going to be more than that? Yeah. Um, one guy quote us 32,000. What? Yeah. I'll tell you my quotes are right there. Yeah. I mean, the cheapest one Holy cow. was 10.5 without 
anything oh, yeah, figured in, yeah. and I don't think he's accurate. I was a little. That was a, a, a light quote, so that's why we're doing the RFP. You can be kind of suspicious of the name, just, even for that one. Just, <laughs> <laughs> he was really nice, though. He's, he's a lovely person. Okay. Yeah, he's really nice. Oh, here we go. Just make sure they use high quality. Yes, things. and we did do discuss not, that. Yeah. Do not put cheap paint. Yeah. Well, we had one person come that. That was a, the one in the gray. Is no. Okay. Really great. Okay. Absolute no. Okay. Um, but the other three are all very good. Um, as well as one of them had a large crew, which is impressive. Yeah. That was that one. Can't he had a large that crew. So they could come in and get it done and be uh -huh. quicker. You know, uh -huh. it wouldn't take, like, if you have one person doing it, it's going to take them. Unless they're working nights and weekends. Because we're talking ceilings, trim, everything. Uh huh. That's going to be expensive to refinish those floors. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's going to be very expensive. I know. There's a lot of there's a lot more than I thought. But, okay. but we're you know, we'll about get somebody. So, I can show you the floor in my room after. If I pull out the garbage can, you can see what it looks like. Okay. No, I'm, I hey, I'm Scott, I'll look about painting. I'm a floor. I'm a floor person. I love. <laughs> I know. I love. love okay. It. So the painting you got to put out an RFP. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. You good with that? Yeah. Okay. Just make sure yeah, you I'm, specify what you're going to use for paint. Because so we're not going to sure accept it because, look at it. because what do you mean? if you don't, oh, the they're going to they're going yes. to come in and we'll buy you on the paint. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're I mean, saying sure we you are going to you're going to you're going to spend eighty bucks a gallon, whether you use Benjamin Moore, Moore or Sherwin Williams, okay. their best paint, but it's well worth doing. Okay. What's the? How do you write that into an RFP? What does? I got that. She did. She was like? quality. <laughs> yeah. Right. Paint brand types of yeah. paint to be used, ceiling walls. Okay, I, I, but I think Tommy was. Yeah. A, Tom? But a guarantee. Yeah. Were, were you saying to put into the RFP that they must use such One and such of those type? two brands of paint, either the, I can't remember what the Sherman Williams is, but the. Is uh, Bear good? Yeah, we use it. Too. Ultra. Was, yeah, yeah, what's it called? Yeah, the okay. best. Yeah, the Ultra. I know, yeah. Okay. But the is thing, it, thing it is, I, I've used is the cheaper coat? stuff on projects and it just doesn't last. Whereas you use the expensive stuff, it'll last years and years. Well, it does have that in the back of the car. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Type of paint to be used. Oh, that's just type paint brand that we've got. Yeah. Well, also, do we, would we put in, because sometimes, you know, contractors, they, they, mark up the, they mark up material by 20%. So would we want to, if we're going to have to buy 50 gallons of paint, can we go out and buy it ourselves? One of them said he wanted us to buy it as we went. And I think the others were just going to like, we were going to tell them what we wanted and they just kind of do it and then we'd pay them like, I'd like to just pay half and then the remaining half when they're done and sure. not be pay, cutting checks all the time yeah. sure, for right. them to go buy paint. Also like not to get all the time 20 I can give you a, a name of somebody to call. So. Well, the, the, the quotes the also include, so you know, they include all the furniture moving. Cool. All yeah. of it, moving yeah. it out and putting it back, because yeah. we're not going to do any of that. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So. So, I, I guess a question about the policy. I didn't realize that you can make improvements in here without asking or talking to the select board. So I talked to the guy that was doing the walkway out here, mm -hmm. which I didn't know it was going to happen, actually. Maybe well, I just missed it or something. I thought you knew. But oh, I, I don't remember. I Maybe I'm losing it, but no, I, okay. I stopped by because he was doing it. He was doing. He's doing little things that were all. Everything ended up being just over a thousand dollars for everything he did. Yeah, but that's fine. Yeah. But I, I was thinking that the select board should know. Sorry. What's going to go on? Okay. Now maybe I just missed it in some email or something. Did you Did you know that was going to happen? No. The walkway. No. I didn't either. So I'm not really losing it. I thought maybe <laughs> I was, but okay. But it would just be nice if we knew that was going to happen. Even though it's under the five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars, it'd be nice in the future. Hey, we're going to spend a thousand bucks on that. Okay. Fine. Okay. And the guy you called was fine. He did a nice job. Blah blah blah. But it'd be nice if you ran by the site board. You're not trying to micromanage. You just want to be appraised. I do. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Appraised. Appraised. Thank I you. mean, if we were a bunch of momos and didn't know what was going on, I could see that you would see it ahead. But thank you. We're not. You know. Right. <clears throat> Okay. So, in the future, it'd be nice if we know what's going on. Okay. All right. So. Well, we did some other things, too, just so you know. <laughs> I, that's all I saw him doing. <laughs> and I jumped on that, too. It's well, like, we're why are you here? Just trying to do our little improvements to get everything all done. Club. That's nice. We're going to get a bidet. Get a what? <laughs> <laughs> and you deserve one. Thank you. Thank you. I thought it was good. Can I please have a motion? 
Yeah. I'll make I'll make the motion. <laughs> Absolutely. No. You, don't, you don't have a lot of room in there. No. But it'll be nice when it's done. So. Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. Is that everything? Well, nice to let us know. So yes. <laughs> okay. I'll keep you more up. That'd be good. Of yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am in here fairly often. And, uh, I'm, Sorry, I drive I'm by too. And I place by, but I'm like, oh, they're fixing the walkway. I guess I'm going to pull in here. We're, so we're, I said, we're, Seth, we're, we're working. We're working in here. We're getting crap done. <laughs> they're doing you know? work on some things. Oh. And the thing? Not sure. Okay. They do an excellent job. Okay. That's yeah. something I'm going to bring up, actually. Uh, okay. Something you're gonna bring up? Later. <laughs> Nothing specific. I just was thinking that there's some things that we could do that fall under our purview. That might be a good idea. Anyway. Okay. We'll let you know. Alright. Okay. Send me an email. Yeah. Oh sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're being very cryptic. I don't know what you're talking about. No, that's good. Uh, okay, so you gotta let us know about the flooring. What it would cost to refinish the floors and also about the carpet. Yeah. Okay. Well, the carpet, I got the quotes, but. Well, yeah. we're not going to move ahead till we know no. what it costs right. to refinish. Where did that come to? Just carpet? Carpet, um, the highest one was like 8600 8600 Yeah. And the lowest? 75 Oh, pretty close. Yeah. If two are local, one isn't. And my feeling the one that's not local was the cheaper. And I'm kind of leaning that way because I. I don't want to make, I don't want to choose a local over another local kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that would cause an issue. Oh, that's a good You know point. what I'm saying? And no, that's okay. And you like the quality of the carpet? It's all the same. You don't think it's, it's the same stuff? It's all the same. To choose a local. I, I think it's a good idea to choose a local. Me style. too. And you just take the cheaper or the local. They're pretty, almost the same. Well, basically. just make sure that the bids are equal because Well, that's what I'm saying, yeah. They, Okay, so you want to go so, I mean, carpet America. America. Flooring America. America. What's that? Flooring America. That's a national corporation? I think so, yeah. Okay. No. Excellent. Okay. All right. And you had the choice of country floors, and what was the other one? Delayers. Uh, Delayers. So between the two, if the quality is the same, just go with the cheaper one. And okay. you're going local. Okay. All right, let me get the pool on the other floor, the refinishing. Yes. First. Okay. Yes. Find somebody to. No way are we going to support a national freaking corporation in our little town. Well, but I mean, even if it's cheaper, has, it's, it's like has buying granite from China. Just trying to save money. I'm trying to save money and it's, legit, it's a legitimate. I know that. That's no, no, no. That's it's, it's acceptable okay, you're, to you're, say you're, that. You're hearing her out. I am. Rational. I am. And they said that when they bought the granite from China for Spalding School. And guess what? They ripped it all out. Is that people are so annoyed well, that they're a local grant? Yeah, really? Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, can we move on? The quality oh, wasn't cheaper either. What's that? The quality wasn't No, there. but it was cheaper. It was cheaper. It was. But, but it was a public outrage over that. Oh, yeah. But this yeah. is apples to apples. No. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Maybe not. It's the same company. Okay. Maybe so. I would hope so. I think okay. it all is the same. They give you all the same boards. Yeah. to look at the carpet. So yeah. I think it's pretty much all the same. Well, thank you for trying to say this morning. Okay. So no motion. No. Just, just no. for the RFP. No, because we're going to come back with the... We're yeah. going to put out the RFP, though. Yeah. yeah. So they, need, they don't need a motion for that. Yeah. They don't need a motion for the RFP. No. Yeah. You can, but it's... Okay, warrants. Okay. 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 Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye, Michelle. Thank you. Did you want to give us our, I'll, I can start looking over warrants and passing around if you want to do your sure. administrative report. So the Sanders Circle Culvert Replacement Project that's moving along nicely. Um, thank you for putting those pictures in. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, yeah. Seriously, thank you. <laughs> They're making a lot of progress. Yeah. Um, and they've they, had good weather. Mm hmm Yeah. So they did concrete inspections, um, and we have the reports for those. Um, they're using a concrete mix um, that reaches the strength a bit sooner, uh, which is better for this time of year. Uh, CCS removed the old footings that weighed 20 tons and they used a big crane so there's a picture of that on the website and 
there's another picture that shows how they place the rebar and the lumber on the base of the site. Um, and that's for the concrete forms, for the bottom of the work area, and they also moved the water away with a tube, <laughs> I don't know if I'm a culvert. Um, Town Hill paving project, so it's been milled, paved, and they're doing the shouldering. They should have finished either today or tomorrow, so it's going to be completed by tomorrow. Down Street Green Mountain Home Repair Program. We're marketing um, and promoting uh, this program. It's uh, There's a flyer in your packet. Mm -hmm. um, and this is to promote homeowners to address health, safety, and energy efficiency of their homes. There's grants up to 5K and loans up to 20K. And in order to participate, your household has income, excuse me, income needs to be less than 80% of the area medium income for your county. Two out of the four homes paid the taxes since starting the tax sale. Um, we had a good turnout this past Saturday. Uh, we had 10 come to the town garage tour and we had 20 come uh, to the presentation, or sorry, vice versa. 20 came to the tour, 10 came to the presentation. I started the USDA loan application. Uh, there was a form called SF424, so I uh, did the first pass with a narrative for that. And there's other steps and documents to gather, like five years of audits and balance sheets, things like that. So there's a list of things. And then getting, um, access to the government grant website as well to upload that document. Uh, and then a reminder that the vote for the town garage is tomorrow, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. That's it. Okay. Thank you. What, um, what are people's sense of uh, where voters are in the town garage? Um, what do you hear when people come in? I, I heard that it's either yes or um, empty. <laughs> or empty. So, like they didn't, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, so, yeah. but which I heard doesn't affect it. No. So no. it sounds positive. Uh huh. But, Is um, it blind? Only half voted so far. Right. So, More than half. Yeah. Which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Probably. No, it's 49%. Yeah. As of Friday night. Right, so today is the Rosie oh. reported Saturday morning to oh. us. That was Saturday morning. Right. So it could be well, a few more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they said there was a ton that came in today. Oh, no kidding. Before you came in, oh, yeah. there was a huge there was a lot of traffic today. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good. I guess. Keep our fingers crossed. Oh, yeah, no yeah. kidding. Because we're going to have to come up with a plan if it doesn't pass. Yeah. yeah. We'll get into that later. But we're still on, on, on the record. Mm -hmm. But yes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. That'll do it. And any plan that we discuss with the quorum of the select board, we'll do on the record. Or in executive session. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah, I want to bring something up, but we can do it off the record. Because we'll have it in the next agenda. Okay. So I'm going to bring that up after, okay. after off the record. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Uh, second. A second. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh all those who would like to adjourn, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. It's unanimous. We're adjourned. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night, Good night. Good night.